What is the first thing you look to as a solution for when you keep going off at a certain time of the day? Is it medication or something else? Hi, it's David from Life with Parkinson's. And we're going to look at that question from a few different points of views and angles, just basically based on what I've been looking into this last year. Thank you for watching. We hope you consider subscribing. And this video is an extension of one I did a little while ago called Fatigue and Parkinson's Disease. Three possible solutions. So near the end of the video, I'll put up a link for this one. And if you haven't seen that video, you can check it out at the end. We have a lot of information to cover here today, so let's get right to it. Please remember that as a person with Parkinson's, I am trying to make the best sense that I can with all the different information out there. A lot of this information is based on personal experience and observation, things that I've seen. We are all a little bit different, and what works for me might not work for you. So please make your own decisions and do your own research. Parkinson's disease affects our whole body. Albert Einstein once said, Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Why do we look to L-DOPA as our only solution for Parkinson's disease? Why do we do it? I think I know why we do, and that's because we're trained to. When we get our diagnosis, I'm not saying everybody went through the same experience, but I remember getting my prescription and being told, take this much, this much, this much per day, and then I'll see you in six months. And that was basically the extent of my trainings. And that's continued along the way. If I get more symptoms during a certain time of the day, I'm told to cover it with more medication. But what if there was a different solution? What if there was something else we could do than just adding more medication? Because I believe that Albert Einstein really hit the nail on the head here for this situation. I really believe it is insanity. Look, my body can only handle so much more L-DOPA. And yes, my dyskinesia is bad today. But it's actually because I had a really bad sleep last night. I was just so excited about this video. My body can only handle so much more L-DOPA. And my dyskinesia will become debilitating. What about you? I don't have the solution for everybody's Parkinson's disease out there, but there are a lot of things I have been doing lately that are helping a lot. And I mean a lot. I've never felt better in four years. So I'm looking at ATP, mitochondria, antioxidants, and I'm making good progress with those. And I'm very excited to share with you what I've learned. In my opinion, we need to start looking at Parkinson's as a whole body experience because it affects our whole body. And I say it is a full body experience because when you're on, everything is on and basically everything works as it should. But when you're off, like truly off, like an interruption of motor function, not everything works as it should. What I'm here to tell you about today is that it's not just the substantia nigra in your brain that get affected by Parkinson's disease. It's not just the dopamine producing cells that are depleted. There are other things in your brain that get depleted as well. If this is a bit of a shock to you, I'm going to say it again. It's not just your dopamine producing cells that get depleted by Parkinson's disease. In my opinion, when we only focus on the dopamine producing cells, we're missing everything else that needs attention as well. If those areas get the attention that they need, you might get some on time back during your day. And then you don't have to take more L-DOPA. You don't have to worry about dyskinesia. Imagine that. What I'm talking about first today is ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Something that every cell in your body needs to function properly. And if you didn't know, it's also a neurotransmitter. Dopamine is not the only neurotransmitter in your body. ATP takes part in that job as well. ATP carries messages from one nerve cell to another. ATP can be released by nerve cells in the body, peripheral neurons, as well as nerve cells in the central nervous system, brain and spinal cord. Its role as a neurotransmitter is to maintain homeostasis, equilibrium throughout the body. The problem here, though, with people like us, people with Parkinson's, is that our mitochondria have been damaged. So the batteries of our cells that store the ATP 
or the adenosine triphosphate are damaged. And it could be a very large number of cells that are damaged, and they're all over your body. They're just not in your brain. So if the batteries are depleted and the energy is depleted, if there's not very much ATP available for you to burn, a few simple tasks in the morning could burn you out for the rest of the day. Kind of sounds like fatigue, doesn't it? So I might get a few questions here. Someone might be like, hey Dave, how do we boost our ATP levels? Well, there are a number of ways, and I'll put some down in the resources below. But one of the big ways you can help is to eat foods with a lot of nitric oxide in them. Like beets, cabbage, green leafy vegetables. That would be a good starting point. We need to treat ourselves as if we were a NASCAR racing team. This is the part where I get a little bit upset. Because I don't believe we're set up for success as people with Parkinson's. We're set adrift in this world of conflicting information. And a lot of times I believe we're not sure where a good source of information is. I can look back and see what the lack of good information has done. Not only to me, but other people out there with Parkinson's as well. We're not told about the things that are lacking in our brain. We're not told about things that are harming us. We aren't told certain healthy foods may accelerate Parkinson's symptoms. And the list goes on. I believe that we need to set up our care as if we were a NASCAR race team. We need to have a good driver, a good car, an engineering department behind us, excellent fuel, good management, all the things that we need to get set up for the race. We wouldn't be able to race a car without the proper fuel, would we? I think that's how we need to treat ourselves. We need to get out of our Parkinson's body what we put into it. <laughs> We need to go that extra mile and watch out for ourselves. Everything I do now is maximizing these three things. ATP, mitochondria, and antioxidants. And a good way to help our mitochondria is red light therapy. It gives me a big boost of energy. And I know the products from Rouge Care Canada are excellent because I've been using one for a long time now. Really, we just need to give ourselves a chance. The l double will take care of the rest. If we solve the chronic fatigue problems that we're experiencing, our days are going to be a lot more enjoyable. And some of you might say, well, Dave, I trust my doctor. He would tell me about these things if they were important. It's possible they don't know. And that's what I've found within my local medical system. They don't know about these extra things that can help us. And if you saw one of my recent videos... I talked about the 17-year information gap that the medical system experiences. It takes 17 years for a treatment to filter down to the general patient population. So it's possible that in the future your doctor will learn about these things, but for now it might just not reach them. I'm sorry, but this is our responsibility. We have to stop waiting and expecting that other people are going to figure out what's wrong with us. We know we have Parkinson's disease. We know that for sure. And we'll, we're grateful for that diagnosis. And we're grateful for the L-DOPA pills. But I don't believe it's the whole solution. Like I said earlier, Parkinson's disease affects our whole body. On top of that, research has pointed to the fact that people with Parkinson's have a leaky blood-brain barrier. Oh, great. So now, on top of the Parkinson's disease, and all the things that have been depleted in our minds, we have to worry about foreign toxins and other things getting into our brain. Yes, we do. I'm sorry, but don't shoot the messenger. This is a fact. So this is where I believe we need to flood our system with antioxidants. Of course, we need to replenish our glutathione, but a quick and easy way and an inexpensive way to get lots of antioxidants into our body is through hydrogen water. And I've been using the Hydrolyte water bottle. And this is, I made a video about this before, but I took it down because I wasn't sure it was actually doing something, but now I am. So I'm going to make a new video about it in the future. But there's a link below that will save you 10% off Hydrolyte's lowest price for the hydrogen water bottle if you want to have a look at it. Just a cup of hydrogen water is more antioxidants than you'll need the entire day. So I pretty much just drink hydrogen water all day long. I'm not saying that you should. Make your own decision. Any excess that's not used just easily gets voided from your system, so there's no harm done. But having that extra layer of protection on top of our glutathione, 
I think is the way to go for me. But to protect ourselves from oxidative stress and to protect ourselves from a leaky blood-brain barrier, I believe that we need to set up a massive firewall of antioxidants to prevent oxidative stress from happening ever again because oxidative stress can cause fatigue and it is extremely debilitating. Of course, there's also NAC and glutathione and I highly recommend those as well and I'll have Amazon links in the description below so you can check those out as well. Okay, that video I talked about earlier on should be coming up somewhere around mm -hmm. here. So when you're done here, I'll see you over there. Thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, and sharing this video with your family and friends. Please leave a question or a comment below. I'll see you on the next one. Have a good day. Goodbye.